Hi, I'm Harun, and I'm not a computer scientist. So after this negative introduction, I'm a control theorist, but I love making fun of computer scientists, so that's pretty much what we're gonna do now. <laughs> that being said, how many computer scientists do we have in the room today? Okay, cool. And you all paid for those drinks, did you? Well, look, people, I have good news for you. It might be the case that you're eligible for a refund. Now, we'll see uh, later, but uh, terms and conditions apply, of course. So, the thing is, a computer scientist walks into a bar, gets a pint, pays for the pint, drinks the pint, and leaves. See, they're efficient like that. And no, it's not funny, it's sad. Because they, they do it on flowcharts. They have this thing and they follow it just because someone told them. Bec that's efficient. Now, that's a problem with everything computer scientists do. They make computers that way. But then again, it's, it's not them, really. It's you. Sorry, people. It's you. you. You want them to be strong, fast, fresh from the fight. And the problem is, those guys are really trying hard to get it for you. But they won't be able to do it for a long time, because there's something called Moore's Law, and it's going to pretty much single-handedly destroy uh, the uh, future for us, unless we find a different solution. And I'm here to talk about the different solution. It's called reversible computing. And we start somewhere in your primary school, I hope, yeah? Uh, where you learned something about reversible and irreversible processes. Reversible is kind of, yeah, you can freeze water and unfreeze it, sure. But uh, they told you in school that you can't boil and then unboil an egg. And that you can't poach and unpoach an egg. They told you that Benedict means Benedict. <laughs> but apparently, recently, just uh, a year ago, there was a paper, some scientists made it. They unboiled an egg. And that makes me incredibly happy, and a bit later you'll hear all about it. <laughs> so, the problem with reversible processes is that they create increase, generate entropy. Now, there goes my budget for scientific jargon for tonight, but that's fine, still, still a cool word. Entropy. <laughs> entropy is a measure of disorder, mess in your room. And on the other hand, it's also a measure of temperature, of heat, of, uh, of energy. So in a sense, working definition for entropy for us here is going to be hot mess. <laughs> and this entropy is generated by everything irreversible. Now everything, then again, means not just processes like boiling eggs, but also computation. Say, your computers uh, do all sorts of computation all, time, all the time. They add numbers, they uh, subtract, whatever. And most of the stuff they do is irreversible. Although, that's kind of uh, the way you do computation as well. Say, if I asked you to uh, think of two numbers and add them together, and you told me that the result was 12, I would have no idea what numbers uh, did you originally think of. Was it 6 plus 6, 4 plus 8, 5 plus 1, because you're terrible at addition. <laughs> I don't know. You deleted information. And 60 years back, we discovered that actually this loss of information, this deletion of information in memory, is the primary cause why it needs to heat. Why, uh, why computers need to heat up and uh, burn your lap? Well, that's it. Deleting information. That's the basic reason. Now, of course, there are other reasons, but this is the information theoretic one, the most interesting one. <laughs> if you don't delete stuff, you don't have to lose power. You don't have to lose energy. You don't have to waste anything. You can 
the fun stuff there is you can scale up because you know, these uh, computer scientists, they like things very tiny and tinier because that's again what you want. You want your phones to be tiny and uh, slick and everything. And then if you want to push uh, a lot of chips uh, into small space, they shouldn't heat much because if they do, yeah, it all melts. And the thing there now is we can minimize it. We can, we can scale it if it's not heating. So look, at that point in history, I would have been a hero. Everyone would think, now my mother probably thinks I'm a hoarder for saving all the stuff on my external hard drives, on my DVDs and everything. But at that point in history, everyone would say, look, He's Greta Thunberg, he's, he's a hero of climate change, and he's going to save the world. <laughs> and at the same time, you, for deleting your browser history all the time, you would be an equivalent of a coal power plant. <laughs> but yeah, at that point in history, they also thought uh, that's never gonna happen, because it kind of sounded like you need infinite memory to do all of this. And they thought, well, yeah, you can't really have infinite memory. Obviously, they haven't met my girlfriend. <laughs> and, sorry about that. <laughs> and, yeah, that's when we discovered this little trick. Again, 50 years back. It's called backtracking. And it works. For those weird people in the audience who have heard of the Minoans, <laughs> think of Ariadne, Theseus, and uh, slaying the Minotaur. So what Theseus did, grabbed uh, Ariadne's thread, went uh, through the uh, labyrinth, slayed the Minotaur, and then just went back following the thread. And when he came back, there it was. He was back on square one, everything was done, Minotaur was dead, all's fine, end of story. And that didn't increase entropy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> ah, those Greeks. Look, uh, is entropy Greek word? Well, could be. Uh, look, that works. Computation, like, okay. Like, do it forward, Use whatever memory you need, get your result, and then just step back in the same way, uncompute whatever you were computing, and you're fine. You come from nothing, you go back to nothing. What do you lose? Nothing. And entropy is conserved. So we can build computers like this. Reason why we don't is uh, for another time and another venue. <laughs> but uh, I need to tell you one more thing. It's not just the entropy. It's, it's also you. It's, uh, yeah, it's not just the computer. Sorry, people, I have to complain again. It's you stirring tea. Because every morning when you stir tea, when you combine two fluids, which are going to be inseparable for aeons, you are increasing entropy. You're causing heat death of the universe. When everything ends, I'm blaming you. Because universe, at one point, isn't going to be able to take more of your entropy stuff. Yeah, there is a capacity, there's a limited capacity. Speaking of limited, uh, President of the United States just <laughs> tweeted uh, that uh, airplanes are not uh, flown anymore by pilots, but by computer scientists from the MIT. Yeah. Well, my sweet summer child, <laughs> Mr. Trump, if, you, if your vision of dystopia is that vanilla, <laughs> let me show you what's gonna happen. Tomorrow, when reversibility is a thing, in a restaurant near you, there will be a computer scientist making your breakfast. Bringing you your breakfast. I can imagine it already. So there I am, sitting back, 
stirring my tea, of course, because some men just want to see the world burn. <laughs> and here comes my waiter with my egg. Boiled egg, of course. So there it is, the egg, and yeah, me stirring, and okay, sorry, excuse me, sorry, sorry. This egg, it's not boiled properly. And the said waiter comes and, oh, all right, sorry, sir, excuse me. I'll just uh, unboil it and boil it again. <laughs> because, you know, I mean. But look, I think this gave you an idea already, computer scientists in attendance, for your drinks. Go, buy a pint, drink a pint, undrink a pint, unbuy a pint, and leave. But just please use the toilets and not here. Thank you very much.